Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And I just wanted to take a minute and tell you guys, game development's rough. Sometimes you start a project and things change. Now there are a few things that have changed as we've built out our game together. And that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. The important thing is that we can course correct and make the best possible product that we can. So now that we're almost at the end of our journey together for Pocket Droids Go, we're going to take care of some housekeeping tasks to fix some issues that are going on in our game. Now that we can transfer to and from scenes, there's a bit of a problem with how we have things set up with our game manager. Now I've still got the error console from when we last ran our game, and you'll notice that I've got 543 exceptions from that little bit that we were in the main, in the world scene. And it's all the same error. Object reference was not set to an instance of an object. And that's from the UI manager .update level function. The reason for that is as we transfer back and forth, our player is getting erased because the world scene is going away. And therefore the location based game, which houses our player is going away too. So the game main, the game manager doesn't have anything to hold on to. That's the first thing we're going to fix. And the way we're going to do that is through our game manager itself. Let's double click on the game manager script down in our utilities folder. And that should open it up in our IDE. What we're going to do is we're actually going to take out this serialized field and just leave it at private player, current player. And then we're going to take out this is not null assertion in the awake function because we're not going to have it ready by the time awake happens. What we'll do instead is we're going to handle all of this inside of the getter for current player. So let's break this out into more of a function style. And we're going to keep the return current player, but above it, we're going to write if parentheses current player equals null and current player equals game object dot add component of type player. And that's that's pretty much it. Basically, at this point, if the game manager does not have a player when it goes to get one, basically, if the player is not set up on the game manager when something requests it, the game manager is going to go out and create a player component and initialize it. So we're done in the game manager. Let's save that and go back to Unity. Now, with that in mind, we actually get to simplify something here. Expand the location based game in your world scene. Click on the player. And we're going to remove the player script. Why? Why are we doing something so crazy? Well, we don't need it anymore. Now the game manager is going to autonomously handle that. It's going to go out and fetch a player, set it up, handle all the data. And that's where we'd be fetching the player from anyways. So having it on this player in the location based game object is kind of unreliable and pointless. Now that we've handled that, we should be able to run our scene and not have that error pop up. Okay, we still have an error, but that's actually pretty easy to handle. Let's go take a look. In the droidfactory.awake function at line 29, we've got an issue. So let's go handle that. Double click the droid factory script under utilities. And we'll go to our IDE. And it said it was in line 29, which is assert is not null player. Well, we are looking for the game managers player. We never updated this to handle going through the game manager instead of passing in a player object. So let's actually change this from a serialized field to just a private variable. 
And we're going to cut that out and paste it down here below our selected droid variable. And then we're going to go down and take out that assertion. Because when awake runs, the game manager may or may not be set up yet, depending on how Unity is loading stuff. So instead, we're going to put it down here in the start function at the very first part of it. And we're going to say player equals game manager dot instance dot current player. And then we can take that same assertion, assert dot is not null, and pass in player. Because we still want to know if there's no player, because then we have an issue. But now the timing should be just right. So let's save that script and go back to Unity. And we'll stop play and run it one more time. And we should be in the clear. Yep. Perfect. Now, just to check, I am going to add some XP by clicking on these floating XP objects. And I'm going to drag one of these droids over within view. That way, we can click on it and see if our player is holding on to its data correctly now. Boom, I actually got it. And the cool thing here is, now you'll notice, our player is actually holding on to the experience, which means it's the exact same player object. So now we've got a persistent player that's readily available to us through the game manager. How cool is that? The next issue with our player is that it'd take a minute for me to get this set up just right. But you can experiment for yourself and find out at this point. When we hit this 100 mark, it's not updating anything. Nothing's running. It's just staying static. And we could go up to even a 1,000 or whatever experience and still be at level 1 and be at a 1,000 out of a 100. That is definitely not expected behavior. So we're going to pay a quick visit to the player class stop running and go up to the models folder go to the player subfolder and expand that and i'm going to double click on the player script once that's open in my ide i'm going to go down to the function that should be handling this the add xp function and all we need to do here is add a function call i'm going to call init level data and now, if we were to go and get that same amount of XP, and again, you can experiment th with that yourselves, if you get your XP up to or above that first limit of 100, you'll notice that your level goes up and the maximum required experience goes up as well. And just to show you, I'm going to be back in Unity, um, and I'm going to start the game, and I'm going to pause my video and get us up to 90 experience. OK, so I've added POI XP bonuses to the screen until I got to 90. I'm going to drag one more and click it. And now you'll see that I'm at 2 for my level. And I'm at 100 experience out of 200. So now we know that that's updating. Perfect. The last thing we're going to do is pay a quick visit to the droid script. So go to Models and double click on the droid script under droids. And we're going to open that in our IDE. And we set these up to be don't destroy on load. Now that we've got our scene transition manager, we don't really need this. We can actually pass the droids back and forth and not have them be on every scene forever and ever, because that'll be kind of cumbersome to deal with if you go and expand your game and have more scenes in it. And it's not really a great practice. So let's get rid of this don't destroy on load this inside of the start function. And since that's empty, we can just go ahead and get rid of the whole function itself. We'll save that script and go back to Unity. And now that we've got all that taken care of, we're going to go ahead and call this cleanup video good. So let's go ahead and save our changes. 
and be sure to update your collab or Git or whatever you're using. I'm going to. And let's get ready to wrap this up. Great job following along. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.